This is a theory that talks about Bowser and King Boo from the Mario series. Bowser is a crazy villain. Some of his deaths at the end of the Mario games were pretty brutal. An example would be in Super Mario Galaxy 1, when he falls into a star and then gets stranded in an exploding planet that turns into a black hole. King Boo's role in the Mario series, at first glance, doesn't seem to be anything significant. He only appears in a few Mario games, and aside from Luigi's Mansion series, his role in the game he does appear in is minor. You may think that Bowser and King Boo have nothing related to each other. However, they both play a major role in together in the Mario series, which keeps the series alive. While this is never explained directly, there are a few games in the Mario series to which it gives hints about the truth of Bowser and King Boo. In Super Mario World is the first Mario series game which ever evidenced for the same fury to be seen. King Boo was really around as early as Super Mario's Free Bros, three days in which Boo's at first appear. He was never appeared in the game again. Have you ever realized how occasionally these were ghost house in levels of Mario Super Mario World? These houses were of Boo's lived peacefully in the afterlife. Then came Mario, who stormed into these houses and wrecked havoc numerous times throughout the events of the game, often with malicious intent. The Boo's knew that they had to stop this, so they reported to Mario's actions to King Boo. King Boo was furious about this, so he started tracking down Mario. Similar Mario levels, Havoc would continue to future Mario games, thus being the Boo's and the King Boo's hatred towards Mario, and they still continue to this day. Paper Mario is a second Mario game that provides evidence for the Fury. The main int attention in the game is for the Fury goes to Bowser. But King Boo deserves to be mentioned as well. This is because Mario had actually allied with the Boos in World Free of the game, and so you may think, would this change King Boo's mood about Mario? However, if you think more into it, you'll see that this is a brief alliance that wasn't nearly enough to make up for Mario's past aggression. First, he is allied with one ghost house, compared to several other disrupted past games. Second, the alliance was forced because they wouldn't give him the star sprint until he helped them solve their problem. In all, what Mario did in Paper Mario wasn't enough to stop King Boo's hatred towards him. Bowser plays a much bigger role in the, in the Fury in Paper Mario, and at the end of the game where it gets practically interesting. This starts off the scene where Mario and Bowser and Kami Koopa are on the platform way up in the clouds that is about to explode. Mario is seen escaping there from the help of star sprints. Bowser, on the other hand, isn't so lucky. Explosions can be seen and heard without him or Kami Koopa escaping. While Bowser's death before games were at least understandable on how he survived, Maybe he can swim in lava and only got injured in smaller falls. There is no explanation on how Bowser can survive being stranded from an exploding platform thousands of feet from the sky. No matter how tough or resent he has been in the past, Mario fell from the same height at the very beginning of the game, and then he even got killed, though he was, on, he was fortunately survived by the star spirits. In fact, the proof about Bowser's death may have hinted in the game, at the very end of the game, when you must walk to Peach's castle to trigger the ending scene, go to the center part of the town. In front of Merlin's house, there should be a sign, which would be called Toe Town News. After mentioning about how Mario defeated Bowser and how Peach and her castle are safe, it also mentions this. Bowser was badly beaten and will likely never return. We were sure of it. Almost positive. After saying the obvious on how Bowser was badly beaten, it also states on how confident they were in that Bowser won't return. Disconnections that can be made in the series of events strongly suggest that Bowser has suffered such a brutal beating that he had finally been killed. But wait, if Bowser's dead, then why is he alive as the main villain in the Mario series today? This is because the Fury still expands into the Mario games released after Paper Mario, Luigi's Mansion. 
Luigi's Mansion is perhaps the most important and significant game to this fury. You all know what happens at the start of the game. Luigi goes to a mansion and that he won a contest, only to find out that there's a much darker than advertised, and this needs to be find out where Mario is, who went into the mansion before him. This game features King Boo's first game in appearance. He appears after Luigi opens a trap door, and a bunch of Boos and King Boo fly out of it. About midway through the game, you see King Boo in a fancy room with Mario inside a painting, struggling to get out. This is the first sign that King Boo is up to something sinister with Mario. But soon after, perhaps the most crucial event in realization to the fury occurs in the area free. Do you remember the fortune-telling ghosts, also known as Madame Col Charvolva? You know the kind ghost who tells Luigi to bring Mario's dropped objects so he can see what happened to Mario? Well, once you do drop the last object, she then after tells the orb to show them all where it can be about Mario. She will say this, What is this? Bowser? How can it be? I see the hideous form of Bowser. Is Bowser somewhere in this mansion? I cannot believe it. Yes, and I see it. I thought that Mario had soundly defeated Bowser. Has King Boo somehow revived Bowser? This could be horrible. Well, for you. While she confirms that Bowser still exists, she doesn't understand why considering Mario soundly defeating Bowser. Remember that through Paper Mario, when Mario game was before Luigi's Mansion, and how Toad Town News signed newspaper sign in Paper Mario as if thought Bowser wouldn't return? Also, do recall Bowser's brutal defeat at the end of Paper Mario. See a connection there? Also note the part where she mentions of how King Boo could have revived Bowser. This will be important later on. Another connection that can be made in when Luigi opens the door to King Boo's room. Before the final battle begins, King Boo talks to Mario's painting, and at one point says his interesting line. I remember how much trouble you've caused me in the past. This doesn't make sense at all, considering that this is King Bowser's first appearance in the Mario series, but remember what I said earlier about how Mario kept going on into ghost houses in Super Mario World? And on the other confrontations with the Boos is what King Boo meant by the trouble? King Boo then turns to the Mario painting into a Bowser painting, and then goes on to the painting and sucks Luigi in. You will then have to fight the final boss on the roof of the mansion. Bowser with King Boo controlling him. Now remember the fortune teller telling the ghost on how mentioned how King Boo could have somehow revived Bowser? The connections are implied that King Boo wanted to get revenge on Mario for the trouble he had caused with the boo other Boos by first luring him into a mansion filled with ghosts, then reviving now his dead archenemy, Bowser. The evidence doesn't stop after Luigi's Mansion. If you pay attention, you will see that Bowser's deaths after Luigi's Mansion are more violent and extreme than before. The previously mentioned Super Mario Galaxy 1 is a good example of this. After his defeat in the final battle, Bowser falls into the star. This could surely burn him to death. Even if he could swim in the lava, gravity should have flattened him. Yet, he appears later on a planet that is getting destroyed. The planet then explodes and turns into a black hole, all with Bowser stranded on it. It may seem that there's no way Bowser can return from that, and other brutal defeats in recent Mario games. But there may actually be one explanation. Just recently, I explained on how King Boo revived Bowser. Even well after this apparent defeat by Luigi at the end of the game, King Boo didn't get completely destroyed in Luigi's Mansion. Why? He is a ghost, and as you should all know, because ghosts are already dead and they can't die. What King Boo did instead, though, is to give Bowser some help. He looked over his body to possess him and keep him alive, believing Bowser to be the best vessels to find a way to get revenge on Mario and make his life miserable. You know the tales on how ghosts come for revenge and haunt you forever? This is exactly what is happening to Mario. 
This theory can explain some other oddities with Bowser, and in the more recent Mario games, such as this sudden shift into a very sinister personality. In most games before Luigi's Mansion, Mario's Bowser's plan is mostly just to capture Peach and keep Mario from saving her. In the games after Luigi's Mansion, Mario Pe Bowser focuses on trying to really marry Peach, actually killing Mario, and to conquer the Mushroom Kingdom. Sometimes he even takes it to another level to conquer the universe. Like what is his scene in Super Mario Galaxy? The sudden darker shift only proves further that Bowser is controlled by King Boo. With Bowser now sharing the same sinister personality as King Boo did in his in-game appearances, it would make sense that Bowser's plans would even get more extreme as well. And why this King Boo-controlled Bowser will still try to marry Peach? Not necessarily because King Boo isn't, was in love with Peach, but because he wants to break Mario's heart. This is also why Bowser keeps coming back. No matter how brutal his defeat is, he is still controlled by King Boo, and he won't die as he is now part of the ghost. And, of course, the fact that his part ghost Bowser would truly never die only emboldens him to make him have even more extreme plans. Now, for one may think the source of magic, mainly from Kamek, may have been reviving Bowser alive instead. But it's hard to imagine this is the case in some Bowser's recent deaths. In both Super Mario Galaxy games, Bowser's final defeat is getting sucked into a black hole, and it is hard to imagine anyone going in with them to revive him, least to be killed too. Only King Boo, a ghost who can't die, can help Bowser somehow find a way to survive this still intact. Perhaps he even made a more full physical copy of Bowser's body. Something no character has been proven to do in the Mario games, other than King Boo at the end of Luigi's Mansion. In some of the recent Mario games, such as New Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo DS, a new form of Bowser, with only his bones called Dry Bowser, appears. His form appears to be after Bowser had just fallen into the lava following his defeat. It seemingly makes no sense for Bowser just to have his skin burnt off by the lava and still function perfectly with his bones. But this theory can provide sense of, into this situation. While the lava could damage Bowser's body itself and would burn off all the skin, wouldn't it impact King Boo's possession of the body? This could allow Bowser to function fine with only his bones. In fact, Bowser's carcass is actually not the only body that has been possessed after it's defeated. Dry Bones enemies, which are remains of regular Koopas, are still able to function and to be a threat to Mario, despite the dead dead beside because the regular Boos are possessing them. Since King Boo is more powerful than the other Boos, it would make sense for him to be able to possess the King of Koopas. Bowser has a much powerful Boo. King Boo may also have unique ability to return Bowser's skin later on as well. After Luigi's Mansion, King Boo himself only physically appeared in the Mario spin-off games, such as Mario Party and Mario Kart, as well as a select few other Mario games such as Super Mario Sunshine and Super Princess Peach. King Boo's appearance in these games mainly seemed to be debunking this fury. But pay attention to how King Bao Boo looks into the Luigi's Mansion games, and how he looks like in the other games. The Luigi's M G's Mansion King Boo has features unique to all the other Boos, such as the glowing eyes, purple tongue, and the crystal crown. The King Boo in the other Mario games does not have those features. He even more resembles the big Boo in these games instead, just a larger version of the Boos, except with the crown on his head. What is most likely indicates that King Boo you see in Mario Kart, Mario Party, and other non-Luigi Mansion games is just a fake or a replacement of the King, while the true King Boo is busy controlling Bowser. In Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, King Boo likely frustrated with from the series of defeats while in possession of Bowser escapes from Bowser's body to try and come up with a plan while in his ghost form, perhaps trying to take a different approach than a usual order to achieve success. 
Bowser doesn't make any appearance at the game at all, which also can be seen as evidence to the Fury. It should be noted that King Boo never made it clear that he managed to escape his painting, and he appeared to be trapped at the end of the first Luigi's Mansion game in order to make sure that Mario didn't connect him to Bowser. However, when he saw Professor E. Gad's decision to sell his painting of his game as a good opportunity to make it appear as if though he escaped the painting after being trapped in it, despite King Boo's efforts to try and get revenge on the Mario Bros and achieve domination by shattering Dark Moon, Luigi again manages to defeat himself in ghost form. King Boo, of course, doesn't really die at the end of the game. He just returns to Bowser's body just to think of his next plan. The plot of Super Mario World 3D may provide proof to the Fury. In this game, instead of capturing Peach, the King Boo controlled Bowser instead attempts to kidnap the seven sprinkled princesses. This decision may appear to have made no sense from Bowser's perspective, but in the knowledge of this fury it actually does. The reason is that the Sprixies are only the ones that can actually destroy the ghosts. This leads to King Boo kidnapping the princesses instead of Peach. He identified these princesses as a true threat to him. Although defeated, King Boo was still able to escape. Another similar fury to the one that is explained above King Boo is actually Bowser's ghost. The fury would have been mostly the same concept, except this time there was no true King Boo before Paper Mario, and when Bowser died in Paper Mario, his spirit became King Boo, which is first seen directly afterwards in one and the other, the next game chronologically, Luigi's Mansion. Therefore, the trouble in the past that King Boo mentioned in Luigi's Mansion may have not specifically be for any trouble that he caused in the ghost houses, but the trouble he caused him while he was alive, trying to capture Peach. King Boo then often built and revived his own body, which, with the exception of Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon, used to try and get revenge on the Mario Bros over and over, but with the failure each time, with the fact that dry bones are referred to as dead Koopas, Troopas, possessed by their own spirit in the form of booze. It makes sense that Bowser, the king of the Koopa Troopas, would be possessed by his own spirit in the form of the King Boo, and Bowser also having a dry bones-like form with dry Bowser. This could be a better explanation on how Bowser, even after Luigi's Mansion, still showed an infraction towards Peach, since under this fury, King Boo is also dead for form of Bowser. It would make, make, make sense that he would still try to marry Peach, and it would also make sense that he still makes it more seriously and go a step forward with extreme dangerous plans of world domination and on how he doesn't need to worry about the fear of death since he's now in fact undead. Well, everyone, that was the Bowser and King Boo Fury, a um, Super Mario um, Fury pasta written by my world. Um, my final thoughts on this story. I actually really like this Fury pasta. I know a couple times I've seen a couple narrations of some people actually narrating this story, and I personally thought this was a good creepy pasta. Pretty good pasta, actually. I personally really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really great story. Um, it's a pretty good fury. I mean, this could be possible on, you know, why King Boo wasn't really appeared in the Mario games, which you most likely see Bowser. But the fact that, you know, all these furies that are stated in there, it honestly can make me wonder. But this is kind of also making me wonder if that's actually the real case. I personally really enjoy this story. I personally thought this story was pretty good. So, I guess with that being said and that being the case, this one was a pretty interesting story. Now, I definitely really have to say it's definitely a pretty interesting story. I really enjoy this one. So, yeah. 
with that being the case and with that being said, I personally really can say that these theories are actually believable. I mean, I haven't really played the Mario games in like a really long time, but I know some of them. Most of them seeming to be pretty good. I personally really enjoy these stories. These stories definitely are good ones. I definitely personally enjoy these stories, and I do really consider you guys um, checking this story out. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description down below, so that way you guys can, you know, take a look at this story if you haven't. So, yeah. With that being the case, and with that being said, I personally really enjoyed this story. I thought it was a good one. I mean, it does have a really good meaning of, you know, behind, you know, certain things. I personally really enjoyed it. So, yeah. With that being said and that being the case, I personally really enjoyed this story. It's a good one. And I have to say right now that, that there's a lot of time and effort into this story. So, I got to give props to the author for making this story pretty good. So, I don't know if the author of the story will see this video, but if they ever do, I want to say this story is awesome. You did a pretty good job with this story. There, There's a lot of believable answers. But, you know, this is actually making me want to go play some Mario games again, even though I haven't played them in a while. I think I haven't played them in, like, years. I don't remember when the last time I played them. But they're fun games. I mean, I have to say right now, Oh, did I forget to mention about the grammar? The grammar is really good. I was able to read this story pretty good. The grammar is really good. The sentence structuring is really good. The storyline, flat out amazing. I really enjoy this story. I personally really do like it. So, with that being the case and with that being said, it's a, personally a pretty good story. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was like a really well-made Fury Pasta. I I am going to say right now, um, to the author of the story, if you happen to be, you know, reading this, which I don't know if you are or not, but I gotta say, you write this story pretty damn good, and it's awesome. Like, you did an awesome job with this story. I personally enjoyed it. So... With that being the case and with that being said, I really got to say your stories, your, this story was pretty awesome. I really enjoyed it. I mean, I can't, you know, stop saying how good this is because this story was actually one of the best ones I have ever seen. And it's been like, I guess a few... um a few um, years since I last heard a narration of it. I think it might have been, I don't know if it was the year before, or maybe 2020. I can't remember, but I got to really say, great story, and I really hope you have made more stories just as good as this one. So, do I have really any complaints to say about this story? No. I actually don't have any complaints uh or statements of what I did not like about this story. I can't think of anything that I did not like about it. I cannot think of anything that I like did not like very much about it. I personally really thought it was a good story. I mean, it's really well made in detail. There's a lot of time and effort into the story. And I gotta say, hey, to the author, that this is actually one of the best stories I've ever seen. It's a really great story. It's definitely a good one. I personally really thought it was a good story. Overall, really fabulous and well-made story. Definitely got to say it's a pretty good one. So, what else can I really say about this story? Um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. But if, you, if I'm missing anything, please let me know in the comments below. Because if I am missing something, you guys can let me know in the comments below. Because I personally would like to hear what you guys have to say. Now, I guess this review has gone on for long enough. I can't seem to think of any other words to say. But I definitely have to say, I'll leave a link in the description down below. So that way you guys, if you're interested, can go and check out my, you know, the story. I will, I mean, it's not my story or anything, but... 
I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video down below. So if you guys are interested in, you know, checking it out, you guys can. So I guess that's pretty much all I have to really say because I can't seem to think of anything else. But I really have to say it's a um, pretty good film. And I really enjoy this story. It's a good one. I definitely really have to say that it's a really well-made story. It's definitely a good one. It's There's a lot of time and effort into this story, and I personally really enjoy it. So I guess with that being said and that being the case, this is just a pretty good story. So, yeah, I guess uh, I'm going to wrap up this video. This video is already seven minutes long. But, yeah, like I'm always going to say and like I always continue to say, this is just simply my own personal opinion, and if you happen to disagree with me, that's perfectly fine, too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these stories. This is just simply my own personal thoughts. I give this story a 10 out of 10. It's a well-made, awesome story. I definitely really recommend you guys check out this story if you haven't. You guys will not be disappointed once you've seen it. It's a really awesome story, and I personally really enjoyed it. So... Yeah, um, I guess with that being said and that being the case, um, yeah. What did you guys personally think of this, um, Fury Pasta or Cree Pasta, whatever you prefer to call it? Did you guys enjoy it? Did you guys not? Also, what we have done personally to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And leave me what your thoughts are on this story in the comments below, because I'd like to hear what you guys think. I'm the Lion Queen. I want to thank you so much for watching today's video. If you're new to my channel, be sure to leave this video a like. Comment and subscribe if you're new. Ring the bell for notifications to when I upload, so that way you guys will not miss an upload. Also, if you guys are interested in following my um, my DeviantArt account, as well as my, my um, Twitter account, you guys can go follow those two if you're interested. Um, there is a link to it in the about page section of my channel, so you'll be able to find my, you know, my DeviantArt, as well as my, well, Twitter account. So, and with that being said, and that being the case, I personally really enjoy this. It's a pretty good, um, pretty good, pretty good, um, story. I really enjoyed it. Also, if you're interested in following my backup channel known as Miss Dark Shigo, link to that will be in the About page section of my channel as well. So if you guys want to go check those out, you can be my guest and go check out my backup channel, leave a like if you like, etc. So, I guess with that being said, um, yeah, I want you, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, and as always, um, please roll the outro because I'm out.